it's just something very racist to me about a black person rowing during Black History Month. up y'all it is thursday morning i'm about to go to the gym the last couple days honestly i haven't been in the best spirits i my moods go up and down <laughs> and um i'm just going through some stuff <laughs> and it's just affecting my mood it's affecting my spirit and um so anyway i'm gonna go to the gym this morning going to rejuvenate rejuvenate and um yeah prayerfully i get on a motherfucking treadmill it's black history month patience is thin y'all know how i feel about getting on the treads first so let's go ahead and get this workout out the way okay back from the gym and guess what and guess what a bitch got on a motherfucking treadmill when I got there though. When I got there though, my name was on the rower. And let me tell you something. It's just something very racist to me about a black person rowing during Black History Month. <laughs> Ain't that what y'all used to have my ancestors doing? Rowing and shit? During Black History Month. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Put my ass on the treads. And you know, I was ready for her to get spody, but she didn't. She's like, oh, you know what? Go ahead and take number three. Exactly, exactly. Um, I burnt, what, 480 calories in an hour? That's not bad. I like to do at least 500, but the class that I've been going to lately, I don't like his class. I don't feel like I do my best, so I'm gonna go back to my homegirl class. As a matter of fact, I, need, I feel like I need to go to earlier classes. I've been doing this 10 a.m. shit, and it's just not, it, 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 it's not the tea. It's not the tea. So I'm going to go ahead and do 845 from now. Not my battery done during Black History Month. So I'm going to go ahead and take a shower, answer emails, get some work done. Um, I'm seeing Kyle tonight. <laughs> Speaking of Kyle, I've still been on, I ain't gonna say the dating app, but I've still been on there, you know, like, like seeing what's out there and I'm just really not finding nothing. And remember, I said I was gonna give myself a chance to date. Like, I really want to date, but I'm not seeing nothing on that motherfucking app. And I don't wanna go on another app, come and see the same shit. Now, Kyle told me that he pays for his service. Which makes sense why he found me. Because, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I am the type of women you pay to see. <laughs> Just saying. But, bitch, I've been doing the free version of the app. So, when he told me he pays for his service, I was like, oh. Should I go ahead and pay the $30 for a month? And he was like, uh. So, I don't know. Because I feel like, okay, I done met somebody that I'm really vibing with. But again, what did I say? I say I want to give myself a chance to really date these niggas. Like, I'm trying to date these niggas this year. Child, speaking of, I'm really trying to date. So, I'm going to let y'all in on something I might not be supposed to let y'all in on. I have been tapped to go on a dating show as a contestant. Now, I... if I really want to do it because I don't know if I'm really going to find love and like I do not want to be embarrassed like I do not <laughs> I do not want to go on national TV and have a nigga embarrass me like I don't know do y'all think I should do it now I'm not going to give you guys too many details about it I'm considering I'm strongly considering doing it because number one like I do want to find my prince like I do want to find my king I'm tired of date like you know you know one of the reasons why I've, I've realized that 
I get so complacent when it comes to dating. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot with these niggas. I just really get, first of all, if I meet somebody that I really like, I can't help but just feed into that person and just focus on that person. But I need to learn how to date this person but date other people which is why i'm still on the app and I'm, i've been looking but i'm not finding no but like y'all i really want to show you what app i'm on because i want to show y'all the dudes that be coming at me and it's like <laughs> i'm just like oh my god what 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 make you think i would ditch you <laughs> Où est fantôme? Où est j'aime parler? J'aime parler, j'aime fouet. Et puis où est que c'est où même même qui te ca approcher? Why do you think you can approach me? Why? It be the motherfuckers with the most audacity that be trying to then the dudes that I really really do want, you know, step into me. <laughs> They don't. Isn't that real life? Isn't that all of our real life? Like the people that we would really love to like approach us, don't approach us. One of my homeboys told me that um, I, he, he knows who I am. Like he knows that I'm very approachable, that I'm very nice and I'm very fun. But on the outside, it doesn't look like that. Like to somebody who doesn't know me, who doesn't know my name, who doesn't know who I am, I just, I do come off like, just like damn like i it's i don't know if i could approach her and i'm like damn, really i mean am i mad at that though am i i don't think i'm mad at that but i do want to be approachable i don't know then he was like just when do you make yourself available like when are you available when where can where can a man meet you i'm like i mean <laughs> Yeah, you do got a point. That's why I hate like whenever a girl says stuff like, yeah, it's hard to find a guy. And then like, you'll see a bunch of people like, oh, it's hard for you. It, you, you not, you not, you not. And it's like, no, it is hard to find a quality guy. Like it's not hard to get a nigga. It's not hard to get a guy. Like it's not hard to like, I could literally make a phone call today and be in a relationship today. It's not hard. What is hard is finding the relation, finding the person that is for you, finding a person that will really, really work for you, finding your person. Like find, what's really hard is finding a quality person. Just the other night, I was out with one of my guy friends, right? And we went to dinner and we got into a huge argument. We were talking about parenting girls. My name was on the rover. And let me tell you something, it's just something very racist to me about a black person rowing during Black History Month. When it, and, and having sex talk with girls versus having a sex talk with boys. And I told him that when I have a daughter I want to teach her that sex is a pleasurable thing. You are supposed to get pleasure from sex. And reason for that is because when I was younger, that was not taught to me. First of all, when I was younger, when my mama was, uh, when my mama was uh, parenting me, it was, girl, if you have sex, you're going to hell. Hey, if you have sex, you're going to hell. And then I waited all the way till I was in college to have sex. When I finally had sex, it was horrible. So horrible that I went through a year long depression. Okay? So I don't want that for my daughter. I would love for my daughter to wait to have sex. I'm not gonna tell her to wait till marriage though. Is that what God tells us to do? Yes, I will tell, I will obviously instill those values in her, but I'm not gonna pressure her into waiting till she's married. But anyway, I feel like I was taught that sex would lead you to hell. Then number two, as a child, I was violated. So when I was introduced to sex, I was violated. So it was not introduced to me in a humane way. When I got older, 
I was violated as an adult. If you follow my journey, you know all about that. I've talked about it several times. My relationship with sex has not been great. I don't want that for my daughter. I want her to know that number one, yes, there is value in waiting for sex. Number two, sex is not just for you. Sex is not something where you, as a woman, you should feel powerful during sex. You should be, you should feel powerful during sex. Sex should not be something that men use to gain power over you. And I feel that whether we realize it or not, sex to us as women, the way it's, it's, it's been pitched to us is something where we lose our power. You know, a lot of us have been violated, whether we were children, whether we were adults. So already that kind of, that take, that strips us of power. And then, you know, a lot of times it's about, well, it's over when the man gets pleased and that that's it. You know what I mean? Like there's so many things wrong with the way I feel I was taught about sex or the lack thereof. And even like when I went to school, when I was taught about sex in school, I was taught about the method, like, Condom, penis, vagina. I wasn't taught about coming. I wasn't taught about, hey, as a woman, you can come. What's coming? What happens when you come? How should it feel when you come? I want my daughter to know that. I didn't come until my late 20s. Now I'm 30. I don't want that for my daughter. I want my daughter to obviously have a safe childhood where she does not get violated. I want her to, yes, of course, learn the method of what sex is, you know, the basics. But ultimately, I want my daughter to feel powerful and to get pleasure out of sex. I want her to have that. I want her to feel happy about sex sex to be a happy thing not to be something that you gotta do because you're in a relationship and stuff i don't want that and so i was going back and forth with my with my male friend about that then he started like to ridicule me over that he's like what like why the fuck would you teach your daughter that like you you and he has kids so he's like you think that parenting is gonna be the certain way but it's not like your your kids are gonna have a mind of their own yes they are they're gonna have a mind of their own but as their mom I do want to lead them and specifically my daughter. I want my daughter to know that sex is something that you should feel happy about. You should feel good. Like it should not be something that is used against you. It should be something that you gain a lot of pleasure from. We really disagreed out of that. And I was like, yeah. So again, it is not hard to find a man. It is hard to find the man that I can not only have a relationship with, but parenting, when it comes to parenting, I do not wanna be clashing with you when it comes to our kids. Like, I want us to be on the same page, whether it comes to religion, day-to-day -day things, who's gonna do what in the household when it comes to our kids, what are we gonna teach our kids? You know, what are our, t our kids going to see from us? I want my kids to see their mom in a happy, healthy relationship. I want my kids to see their mom going on vacation with their dad. I want to see my kid. I want my kids to see their mom being courted by their dad. I want to. I want my kids to see their mom taking care of their father, cooking for their father, their father taking out the trash, their father building things fixing things in the house. You know, I want a dad that's gonna be present, that's going to teach our son how to be a man, that's going to teach my daughter how a man is supposed to treat you, that's going to be in the household. We're in this, we're all in this together. Like we're in a household. We ain't all know you over here, you over there, you got a family over there, you got a family. No, we is not doing that ghetto ass shit. Sometimes I just feel discouraged by just thinking about that. It's like, okay, huh, I got a date, but then also I got to do the work to find the right dude. Oh my God. Then my future kids, I don't want to ruin my future kids life. I want them to see good parenting. It's like, it's just a lot. When you really start to think about it, it's a lot. And I see why so many people, not just women, cause I'm pretty sure men feel this way too, but 
I see why so many people are just single in general because it is a lot of work and a lot of people are not willing to do the work. You got to find somebody who's willing to do the work. Anyway, child, let me go hop in the shower and get my day started. Let's make some wig fast. Let me tell y'all something. This keto nut granola right here is amazing. It's $12. I got it from Amazon. Sister, trust me, the best granola you'll have. I like to cut up my little strawberries, put some blueberries in a cup, put my chia bani, my chia bani yogurt, you know what I'm saying? Put that in a gode, you know what I'm talking about? Then I'm gonna put my granola on top. Yeah, man. Yeah, put the granola on top. Now I'm gonna have my coffee. I'm going to drizzle the cup with a, with a little bit of caramel. Drizzle the cup. Going to make sure I get some caramel at the bottom. Then I'm going to add some ice. Cool, now I'm going to have the Starbucks coffee because I'm not making coffee from scratch. Okay? And now the whipped cream on top. Mm. Wow, bon pour, oui? Bon bagay, net. Let me get my straw child. <laughs> Look at that. Ain't that cute? And fuck y'all. Don't come for me in the comments. And look at my parfait. Y'all, I want to show you guys what Lori Harvey sent me from her skin line chat. First of all, the voice skin care in a carry-on baggage. <laughs> the budget is the budget. The budget is very nice, Lori. Bangadi, Bangadi. Welcome to Skin Island for your forever vacation destination. In this suitcase, you will find a unique five-step system complete with all the essentials for your journey to flawless skin. Mess up, you will love you, I'm glad they hey, Sangula! Sangula! Is this a robe? Bitch, it's a robe. Hey! Oh, sapat? Not sapat. Okay, girl. And we got over here the skin care Hey, hey. Merci un peu. We love it. The budget is increased. This is a budget. Is this a candle, bitch? Let me go ahead and light this shit up. Okay. Mes chandelles là. Oui, t'es moun. Mes chandelles là. Oui, let's light it up. Let's light it up. Ça, ça y est là. Son bail pour rouler. Pour rouler, what is the rouler for? Keep rouler in refrigerator for 10 minutes prior to use for a cooling effect. Okay. So what is the purpose? I'm going to put this in the frigidaire and to put it for 10 minutes for nous faire rolling. Okay. Oh, roll it, girl. Roll it, girl. Oh, ça m'a mis ça oui. Ça veut dire for me to put that on the forehead. This is good, so I can keep my funnel down. I can keep my wig down while I'm washing my face for you, motherfuckers. Okay. The cleanser, toner, the vitamin C serum, the peptide for les yeux, and the qui ça ça est là, Timon? Marron bon nail, cinnamide cream. En tout cas, this is the cream for your figure, man. Let's beginning with the cleanser. Okay, we're going to cleanse our face with the savon. They say you're supposed to scrub for 60 seconds. Is it 60 seconds over? Shit. I'm fatigued. Oh my god. Okay, now we're going to dry off the face now. Oh, now we're going to use the toner. Oh my god, I have too much fun with the toner. Now we're going to use the vitamin C serum to add some vitamin back in the skin. Oh, I like that. Pa -da -pa -pa -pa. I'm loving it. Okay, now we're going to use a cream under our eye because I have raccoon eyes. Oh my god, hopefully this would help, Lori. Now we're going to use the cream to add moisture back in our face. Produit ou pas mal non, Lori? Produit ou pas mal non? Ten ten ou cost de bon. I'm going out with Kyle. And we're just going to get some tacos. I think this is cute. I'm going to wear my little coach sneakers with this. I haven't worn these sneakers yet. I like little cute shoes like this, you know? It's cute, simple. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, uh, uh. I'm going to wear this coach bag that I have. So cute. Is it giving she's cute? Like, what is it giving? What is it giving? Uh. Alexa! What is it giving? Giving is a noun meaning established fact, tradition, factor, etc. Bitch, you damn right. I damn sure am a factor. I damn sure am a motherfucking factor. Good morning. 
the Anna Delvey documentary, well, series. We're gonna discuss a little bit of that and I'm gonna go get these headshots taken and then I'm gonna watch the rest of the episodes that they're releasing today for Love is Blind. I'm about to watch these episodes of Love is Blind and I'm letting y'all know right now. If Jared tries Iyana again, we ride at dawn. We ride at dawn. We ride at dawn. I'm about to head out to go take some headshots. I have to take some headshots for acting. Notice that the natural makeup that I have, you know, I'm not gonna do no lashes. I didn't contour my nose. You know, I'm just trying to keep it very cute. <laughs> bitch, it's my year, bitch. This is my year. This is my year. Like, I'm gonna look back on 2022 and say, Jess, this is the year things turned around for you. Like, I believe that with my whole heart. I'm going to pack a bag. This is a black owned business, Ugly Duckling Co. I actually really love this bag. I just love this bag. Like, it is everything. Ugly Duckling Co. They're on Instagram if you want. Definitely gonna pack my makeup in here. So, I have some lip gloss. I uh, got my lip liner. I'm gonna keep my lip liner very minimal, but you know, I just wanna, I like to just outline my lip a little bit. Gonna pack, this got to be for my edges. Gonna pack this toothbrush to brush my edges. And I'm gonna pack this curl mousse from African Pride, which is really, really good on this wig. I'm also gonna pack these glasses cause I want like just a serious photo where it looks like I, you know, just a little bit of personality. I'm excited for everything that God is doing in my life. I just feel really, really good. I feel like I'm literally just right there. Like, you ever just feel like God is doing something and it's like, you're right, you're right there. You just gotta stay there. I gotta stay in the vicinity, stay in the mind frame, keep working, keep writing, keep working on these pilots that I'm doing. Um, I just started writing another pilot and then I have an idea for a small film and I actually have to reach back out to somebody that I told I would reach out to them yesterday but they told me they were filming something so I didn't want to like bother them but anyway so I'm just I feel like I'm right there I'm right there I'm right there and uh, I'm just staying encouraged staying motivated and I'm just excited I'm excited to just keep pursuing everything that God has placed in me all my dreams like I know my dreams are God given and I know that God's gonna provide the provision for me to do all the things that I want to do so all right let me pack y'all up child so y'all can go with me to the shoot child let me go and turn off this camera y'all so I took an uber to get to the photo shoot place and I'm like this don't look like a photo shoot place <laughs> This look like some Jordan Peele type shit. Like, I'm literally like, I'm out in the woods. I'm lost on my mind. Bitch, uh-uh. And it's these cars that keep running by. I don't know what the fuck. Girl, I might be on like a white supremacist front lawn right now and I don't even know. I'm just waiting for an Uber. Like, I'm just waiting for the bus. I'm in Norcross. Georgia right now, honey, and it's looking very plantation-y. Please be my Uber. Please be my Uber. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Okay. Hello? Yeah, what's going on? Huh? What's going on? Oh, it's you! <laughs> yeah, this is the wrong address. No, but I'm saying you was videotaping. What's, what's going on? Oh, yeah, I'm just... I'm vlogging my day. Like, I vlog. I'm a vlogger. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. well, what happened here? So, I'm at the wrong address, so she sent me the right address. Well, so the address that uh, we dropped you off, that was the address you put in there, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I just want yeah. to make sure, you know, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. So you're the only one, like, driving in the area? I, I don't guess? know. <laughs> I, I have my Uber app, automatic acceptance. So whoever is close by, okay. automatically accept it. So I don't waste time, you know? Well, let's go to the right address. All right, back at the crib. I actually have to hurry up and eat breakfast. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 11.50 a.m. 
never eat breakfast on time. I'm gonna start my days, or, well should I start my day early today? All right y'all, so I have like one more meeting left and then I have to go to the studio. I'm gonna take you guys to the studio with me, but I wanna touch on the conversation I was having yesterday about sex. One of the things that made my guy friend and I clash was me telling him that I want to talk to my daughter about coming. I want her to know pleasure. Sex is for pleasure. It's not just for you to breed. Sex is not just for you to have a man's baby or sex is not just something where a man overpowers you. You need to feel powerful and one of the ways you feel powerful is you coming. And I want to have that conversation with my daughter and he was like, "No, no, uh uh like you can't do that. Like that's not right. Like as a parent, like you have to know, you have to let them figure it out for themselves." And I said, "But I feel like that's what my mom kind of did with me and I didn't know that I could come until like my late 20s. I did not know. And even then I feel like I still didn't know. I still didn't know the different types of coming. This is gonna sound stupid, but before I had my first orgasm, I thought the orgasm was the guy finishing. So like, I thought, okay, he's finished. So, ooh, ah, we're done. Like, okay, ah, cause like, it did feel good. Like the thing about when you're having sex is when the guy is coming and you feel like, you know, the penis enlarging in yourself, like it does feel good to you and it does do something to you. It is stimulating, at least to me. Let me know in the comments if it is stimulating to you. I feel like before I ever came, I used to think that, okay, like the guy is getting ready to come and so that's like the climax. And you know, he's oohing and eyeing, so I'm oohing and eyeing too. So he's like, ooh, I'm like, ooh. He's like, ah, I'm like, ah. So now we sound like a motherfucking Mattress Giant commercial. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. So I'm thinking, you know, only a Mattress Giant, ooh, ah. That's exactly what it was to me. When the guy was done, then it was done. I didn't know that I was supposed to get mine. I remember an old friend telling me, <laughs> this was back when I was living in New York. She said to me, I have to come when I have sex. Like, I don't ever have sex without coming. And I was like, oh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Knowing damn well I had never came. Knowing damn well I had never came. I didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. And then I was like, so, what does it feel like when you when 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 you coming? <laughs> I'm trying to gauge to see you know what it's supposed to feel like. So she's explaining it to me, and she's like, "It's an outer body experience. It feels like you gonna fly." I've never had this experience, but I'm like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, that's exactly how it's supposed to feel." Ah, uh -huh. because I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed that I had never experienced that. I had never experienced an out of body experience. The only time I had ever experienced that is when I caught the Holy Ghost. And I know that's not how I'm supposed to feel when I'm coming. Is it, Lord? Oh God, forgive me. I didn't know. And so the first orgasm that I had was very recent. I, I think I orgasmed before I turned 30. And th and I feel like somebody somebody in these comments is gonna be like, girl, you did not. If you have to think about it, you did not come. Then October 2020, I finally had that outer body experience. He actually used a toy on me. I mean, he had really really good dick, but then he also use a vibrator on me so while we were doing it child this is this is tmi my mama gonna be watching this vlog like girl you are not my daughter anymore didn't i tell you this is not the t <laughs> child she is gonna disown me after seeing this vlog but girl i'm this is god's work i need i need girls out here to know that you spoke you're supposed to come he had great penis like the penis was elite elite penis but he was broke as hell he was a damn swindler he swindled me out of eighteen hundred dollars that's why when i be watching this stuff i'm like okay y'all like one one swindle 
That's it. How y'all getting swindled out of all this money? Because I raised hell for my $1,800 that this motherfucker still owes me. One thing I will say, though, <laughs> I got my money's worth. <laughs> I got my money worth. God. That man made me experience something I had never experienced. For sure, for sure, for sure, I thought someone was going to be knocking at my door and telling me that I needed to either file a police report because somebody obviously is trying to kill me in here or I need to move the fuck out if this is how I'm going to be conducting myself in these people's buildings. It was an out of body experience. I've, I don't think I've ever screamed like that. Like I do, I was like, oh my God, like I did not know I could not my camera dying while I'm trying to tell y'all about the first time I came during Black History Month. <laughs> Let me go ahead and fix my eyelashes, chair. I did not know that my body could do that and feel those things that I felt. So again, I just feel like having those types of conversations with my future daughter is very important. My mom didn't have those conversations with me. And again, like I, like I said before, my mom's, my mom's idea of sex talk was you cannot have sex until you get mariage. When you are marié, you can have sex. If you're not marié and you have sex, you're going to hell. You're going to be hot, show, okay? And there's no air conditioning. Pas de air conditioning dans l'enfer, non? Pas de ventilateur. There's no ice, you will burn. Do you want to burn? Because you will burn. Burn, baby, burn. That was sex talk with my mama. There was no, well, let's talk about penis vagina let's talk about coming let's talk about what is your goal when you are laying down on that bed mind you the first time i had sex it was in a car <sighs> imagine waiting almost 19 years to have sex and you're in college like you're the last to do it and you finally do it and it's in a car mans didn't rent no hotel mind you Miami got Okeechobee. You got the, you got the, uh, uh, what is it? The, uh, for, for $75, you get three hours a night. You got a little heart shaped tub. Kevin did not do me that common decency. It was in a motherfucking car. And I'm going, I'm not going to tell y'all how I ended up in a car because this is already embarrassing. And I'm still going to upload this because you know what? I'm being very transparent. But my first time was in a motherfucking car. Like, like I said, my relationship with sex is horrible. I was like, you know what? I had seen car sex in movies and I was like, okay. I think I romanticized it. And I was like, all right, you know what? It's going to be like the movie car sex. Girl, I didn't get no. Kevin did not. No spit shine. <laughs> Nothing. And I didn't know that I was supposed to get that. But baby, the next thing you know, his, his talker truck was going into my motherfucking tunnel. And because I didn't get no. And because it was my first time, I'm giving you an idea of how rough it was, okay? It was not the work of the Lord. Fast forward about like two, three weeks later, everybody on campus, I'm at college, I'm, I'm on campus one day and everybody's like passing around this t the link to this sex tape. This porn tape is going around on campus. And everybody's laughing about it. Everybody's like, yo, you got to see this. You got to see this. I clicked the link. Kevin is starring in a porn movie where he's getting his dick sucked by three girls at the same damn time while he's eating a bucket of fried chicken. Mans is getting his dick sucked by three white women during Black History Month. During Black History Month, white women while he's eating a bucket of KFC fried chicken. Now do you see why I went through a years long of depression? When I tell you I was down, down bad. Like I was down bad, baby. I could not believe it. To this day, I can't, I, the images is just resurfacing. Baby, this is who I lost my virginity to a year into my depression. 
I went to church service one night. It was like revival at one of my friend's churches. And like they had an altar call and I go to the altar and I'm crying my eyes out. I'm just crying, crying, crying. And the pastor came up to me and the pastor said, daughter, the spirit is telling me to tell you that God forgives you, but you have to forgive yourself. And when I tell you like the release, I, I felt so relieved and I felt like, okay, like God does forgive me. This is okay. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hell. Like I made a mistake and it's okay. Like I can recover from this. I can learn from this. I can grow from this. The pastor said to me, you know, for a man falls seven times, but he gets up eight, you know, he was like, it's not how many times you fall, it's how many times you get up. And, you know, he's like, you know, a man falls seven times. And I was like, well, shit, I only fell one time. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, let me go ahead and try this again. <laughs> let me go ahead and give Dick another try. Hold on, guys. <laughs> And then the next time I did have sex, it was with Carlos. Carlos and I were together for almost three years. First time we waited, we waited like a month or two. I wanted that dick. I was like, I need this Dominican dick. Like, I need to try this shit. I need to, I need to try this Plantano's Fritos, honey. Carlos did his due diligence and took me to the Chobe. Carlos took me down to the motherfucking Chobe. You know what I'm saying? He ran out of room. They had the heart-shaped jacuzzi. You know what I'm saying? The stripper pole. Like, it was... He, Listen, he did his motherfucking due diligence. And mind you, my, the man I lost my virginity to was Haitian. Now, how the fuck you let a Dominican come and do what the fuck you supposed to be done? That's another trauma in my life, okay? Just trauma, just, just trauma, 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 trauma. I don't want that for my daughter. I don't want my daughter losing her virginity in the back of a car. I don't want my daughter violated as a child. I want my daughter to just be educated on sex and what, it, what it's supposed to be for a woman. Do y'all understand why I just feel like this is just very important for me? And again, going back to finding the right partner that's gonna understand that point of view and we do it together. I don't want her to experience during sex and even leading up to sex, you know, doing a better job at vetting, you know, her sexual partners. Just it's all those things. And I just feel like I want a partner that's gonna understand that. And again, that's why it's so important to find the right person. It's not easy because you have views, that person has views. What happens when you guys come together? How does it work? Anyway, drop that in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about <laughs> this whole little segment we just had here. I'm about to go to the studio, so I'll see you guys there.